Today we will show you how to replace the mainboard for KP3S. So here is the brand new mainboard with the version of 1.3. Also, it ends with 303. Looks nice and good. Everything is labeled and organized. And we're going to use the pillar, too. It really helps a lot. Turn the printer. Flip it over. Use the pillar to hold the gantry. Adjust the pillar to make sure it stands stable. Loose and remove the screws. Remove the bottom cover and disconnect the fan. Take it slow and be careful. So there are few differences between the two versions. In case you mix the cables and ports. We suggest taking some photos first. It's actually easy. Because the cables are labeled well, too. We can match them by labels without any problem. But taking some photos as a plan B is still helpful. This photo may help, too. Check this photo if you are using a 3D touch. Remove the display cable first. Loose the clips on both sides. Then take the cable out carefully. After that, remove the E1 and E0 cables with tweezers. They are hard to take out by hand. Watch out, don't hurt any cables or components. Then disconnect the rest cables by hand. Then loose the screws on the E0 port and the H-bed port. Disconnect those cables. Alright, that's it. After that, we can remove the mainboard. So here is the old mainboard. It's a 1.2 version. End with 1.0.3. Loose the screws on the E0 port and the H-bed port. We are going to connect them first. Connect the heat bed cables one by one. Set them tight and don't mix the positive and negative. Then connect the HE0 port. Those two cables don't tell positive and negative. After that, put the mainboard in place. Then tighten the screws to fix it. Put the display cable back, then lock the clips to fix it. Follow the labels to settle the cables. Then it is all set. Connect the bottom fan. 
put the bottom cover back. Tight the screws to fix it. Turn the printer over. Then we need to flash the firmware. Copy all those firmware files into the SD card. Eject the card safely. Connect the printer to the power supply. Insert the SD card and turn on the printer. It will start to flash. This time we are using the latest version with 3D Touch enabled. It should take some time. But this version doesn't fit 407 mainboards yet. Once finished, the printer will reboot automatically. This version has both laser and 3D Touch enabled. You can switch between those two modes. And of course, the Z-Probe Offset Wizard. So let's show you that. First, click the auto level. Then click it again to start. So it will start to measure 9 points automatically. Then stops at the center point. This process should take some time. After that, put a paper on the heat bed. Click Z offset, then click the up and down buttons to adjust. The nozzle should be up and down. Slide the paper to find out a proper distance. Once you finished, click return to store the value. After that, you are all set. If you don't have a 3D touch, just flash the stock firmware. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts, please leave comments down below. We will keep making tutorials to help the community. Please subscribe and ring the bell. You will be notified once we updated. Happy 3D printing!